I think that's really a key about scrappy projects is you are creating works of art that are only yours, that cannot be recreated. Hello and welcome to EB Knits. My name is Emily. I'm a knitter and making enthusiast based in Orlando, Florida. And this is my channel to share all things handmade, specifically knitting. And today I want to talk about patterns for scrappy projects and mini skein projects. Before we dive in, I want to share what I'm wearing. This is the Tana Turtle Tank by Knits and Knots by Ami. I originally purchased it as a Lion Brand kit, but it's another great example of using scraps. You can use all kinds of leftovers that you have that are just of the same weight to make stripes in a top or color block a top so you're using up your yarn stash while you're creating a top or a garment that you're excited to make. So sitting next to me here, I've got a bunch of project examples of times where I've used scraps then I also have some pattern recommendations that I don't have right next to me that I think would be perfect for scraps as well. So let's get started because I have a feeling this is going to be a big video. So I'm going to start with sweaters and garments because I feel like that's what you love seeing the most. So this is a project that's entirely from scraps and from skeins that I just had leftovers of. This is the Ski Lodge Pullover by Erin Elizabeth W. And I actually knit this almost exclusively on my drive from Illinois to Florida when I was moving a few years back. I was not the one driving, obviously. Um, it is bulky to super bulky. So this is an example of where I didn't even care too much about the weight of the yarn. This gray I know is bulky and some of this is super bulky, I know. It's all, um, I think it's 100% acrylic yarn, all of it here. So I did match the fiber type pretty much. You can really take you don't have to knit this exact sweater. You don't have to use this exact weight. This is an example of a relatively simple classic sweater design, but I'm adding stripes of all different colors. I'm bringing, I knew I didn't have a lot of green, but I knew I wanted the color. Oh, you can see I have makeup. I need to wash this. <laughs> um, I wanted the green throughout, so I scattered it around. I knew I wanted the different grays throughout, so I tried my best to not just color block it, but actually stripe it and bring the different colors throughout the sweater to make it more cohesive and also save some for the arms so that those weren't just another, another random color. So those are some examples. This is an example. Um, but like I said, you could really use any sweater pattern, any classic sweater pattern to stripe it, to color block it, to mix and match your stripes, mix and match your colors, to create a one of a kind sweater that only you can make because it's your scraps. This is the pixelated Cardi that I'm showing you next by Knittitude. Nope, I lied. This is the pixelated Cardi by Knit Collage. And this one I did modify slightly. So Knit Collage yarn is a super bulky. And these are both super bulky yarns, but this variegated is like jumbo. It is really big. So it creates a bit of a stiff fabric. It needs a good uh, like shaving <laughs> to get these extra yarns out but these is another acrylic option this is when i was trying to use up all my acrylic scraps so very quick knit as you can see i didn't add sleeves and i even had to modify the pattern a little because there was supposed to be some more of this variegated color going down into that deep purple but i just ran out so i said it is what it is i still really like it i wear it a lot i love wearing like a little light pink tanny tank underneath and I think it's a good example of modifying a cardigan to make it something that I can wear. And even though it's super bulky, I still wear it down here. So down here meaning Florida. <laughs> um, so here's an example. I also really think a lot of knit collage patterns are perfect for scraps. They, you can, I'm sure if, if you have the knitting skills, you can modify them to use a slightly lighter gauge, a slightly lighter weight of yarn. But they have a lot of different patterns that I think you can just mix and match what you have or even hold some of your yarns triple maybe even depending on what weight of yarn you have at your disposal to create to create gorgeous works of art that are exclusively your own and i think that's really a key about scrappy projects is you are creating works of art that are only yours that cannot be recreated next i have the panglossian sweater by more thunder i loved the sweater but I didn't want to purchase anything. So this is what I had left over from a hat that I made my sister. It is new wave yarn from Wool and the Gang. It is a little heavy and it is heavier than the pattern called for. So I just tried it on as I was going and made the modifications. Oh, we've got some ends. <laughs> 
and made the modifications that were necessary so that it would fit me. And again, um, I did have to do some adjustments in the color work. I think specifically right here, there was supposed to be some more color work within this one, but I ran out and I said, eh, it's fine. There are some, geez, I have to wash this one too. Also at the bottom, I was gonna make the pink be the last color, but then when I ran out of the pink, I said, this isn't long enough. Let me just use the rest of my yellow and do my last row and bind off in that. And I really like that contrast. So again, it's kind of about being fluid, about saying, hey, it doesn't have to be perfect and embrace color change, embrace the adjustments that come when you run out of a certain color, a certain yarn. And the final garment I have to show you, this actually wasn't a scrappy project necessarily for me. This is a mini skein project. These are mini skeins from Ken Yarn that I purchased. Um, I wanna say that the proceeds went to Black Lives Matter. He does a lot of really amazing, Jake from Ken Yarn does a lot of really amazing donations and charity and, and then the black is leftovers. This was a scarf that I knit my mom and I just had extra, so I used that. And I think it turned out really amazing. I'm definitely going to be making another one of these. This is, and I even say what this is, it's the Camaro sweater from Tannis Fiber Arts. I will be making another, a scrappy version. I will make the stripes, these diagonal stripes, all different lengths and variations of different colors. And then probably like maybe a gray body or gray base. And I probably also will just make the stripes go down to about maybe even here, like not considerably less long than mine are. So I think that's really nice. And again, I played with, I adjusted the pattern. So that's another thing, you know, don't be afraid. The pattern doesn't have a V-neck rib here, but I thought that that would make me happier with the pattern. So I went ahead and picked up stitches and added this. And it's all about just doing what works best for you. And you can see that all these sweaters have been sitting for a while because they've got... They need a shave, they need the little bits on them taken off. So sorry that you have to see that. So before we get into my non-garments that I wanna show you, let's go through a few more patterns that I think are perfect. I think Stephen West has a lot of amazing patterns that you can use scraps, mini skeins for. I'm looking at the painting, honey, painting honeycomb jacket right now. I really wanna make that one. Um, also his penguano is like the classic scrappy, creative, go your own pace top. Like that is like one of the definitions of scrap projects. Hohi Lokitelli has her Amy cardigan where it is more color blocked, but you could of course do anything with that that you want. You can add stripes, you can do anything. Going back to, um, going back to knit collage, they have their garden party sweater, which I'm planning to use a bunch of hand spun for. And my hand spun is not cohesive. I don't have the same amount of every single one, but that's again, the beauty of knit collage. It's all about making your own art. They also have their glow girl hoodie, which incorporates a bunch of stripes of different colors and their sun woven tank, which is actually similar to this one, but in a little bit of a bulkier yarn. So a high neck, but a sleeveless tank with all kinds of different colored stripes. Their kaleidoscope sweater is also perfect. I have made this, but it's not here. Um, it's actually back at my parents' house in Illinois so that I can wear it and love it when I'm there. And it is another example of a beautiful, beautiful cardigan that incorporates all of these different yarns in wherever you want, in crazy places. Mine is more cohesive. It has more structured stripes, but people usually make them with like one row of color. Everything's totally different. And I think it's amazing. Now that I'm more comfortable embracing that craziness or that love, that work of art, that those different yarns, I could see myself making something like that. There's patchwork cardigans that are crochet or knit that would be perfect. There's all kinds of different tops. Like I said, you can just create, use a classic sweater pattern, but then add color blocks or add stripes here or there. There's a stripy turtle tank from Emily Curtis. I think that's beautiful. There's the sea glass tee, which uses fingering weight scraps from Wool and Pine. They have tee, sweater. I, they might even have a, a short sleeve at this point. That is like a whole line from them that is literally the epitome of just using up your scraps. You could do a color work sweater, like Hello from My Colors Crop by Jessie May or the Soldatna from Caitlin Hunter. They use a lot of different colors in those sweaters and 
maybe just a couple of mini skeins would be enough to embrace these different projects because you don't even have to use if they call for four colors, you can use four colors, but you could also use like six. You don't have to go exactly what the pattern says. Embracing the differences and making it your own is what makes some of our knits so beautiful. There's the Color Quadrant Tank by James N. Watts, which again uses a lot of different bold color. You can use less bold, any kind of colors you want to really just create this geometric shape. And there's so many more patterns out there that you can use or modify but let's move on now to hats. So this is an example of a baby hat. I went ahead the over 2022 and used all of my acrylic scraps. I made them into hats, so you'll see examples here. This is one where I literally just used a literal rest of my yarn that I had. So that's why it's so small, because this is all I had left. It's a color block, it's cohesive, it makes sense, it's cute for maybe a baby or a toddler, probably toddler size. This one is a little bit more slouchy. I literally used the rest of my white ivory yarn and then just use this color changing purple up here. These are, this one is a double brim hat, so it does use a little bit extra yarn. This one, as you can see, is all white, but I have this gray palm. So you can use a contrast color palm if you don't have a lot of yarn left in one color or another palm is a great way to use up all kinds of scraps. You can make a multicolor palm. That's a really fun way. This is another example. I had, this is actually all worsted weight yarn, but I marled it together. So I marled this blue and minty color, blue. I marled this brown and minty color together. Then I transitioned using that same minty color, but this more aqua-y color. And then the top is just the aqua. So another example of just using what I had and trying to make it make sense. These are all I think going to be donations. They can also be gift knits. This is uh, using the last of my brown, or I think what was the last of my brown. And then these stripes are literal ends. So these are, you know, I just magic knotted these together, these three colors here for these stripes. That added a little bit of color here, but not too much. And just had, you know, a couple of feet, maybe even, yeah, just a couple of feet left of these colors and knotted them together so that they could make a teeny statement in an otherwise neutral hat. So those are my beanies. I think beanies are a great way to use up yarn scraps. They're a quick project, especially, especially bulky or super, super bulky projects. I chose to use the double, double brim option because um, they're easy to do when I'm reading or studying. So you don't have to think about a ribbing. It's literally just all net up until the decreases. So I think that's a really relatively mindless project that you can work on anytime when you're on public transit when you're reading knitting studying waiting for an appointment you really can't go wrong i didn't even use a stitch marker for most of these because i didn't even want to have to deal with moving it from one round to the next so, so that's how simple that your projects can be you can also find lots of color work hats and do the same thing as i mentioned with sweaters just use your scraps for the color work that are in hats if you see a stripey hat you love, use your scraps for different stripes. If you see a slip stitch, you can use different, um, you can use different scraps and maybe even like from the same color family, but different scraps throughout the hat to make it a cohesive hat that makes sense um, and isn't so out there. Another beautiful hat that I think is perfect for, I don't have it with me, I actually gave it to my sister, but Stephen West has a syncopation adoration hat and it's brioche. It's how I learned brioche the first time, but it uses two color brioche and it changes throughout the hat. And I think it's so beautiful and so fun and unique. And for me, a hat is really where you can play with color in my opinion, because it's just an accessory. It's not something you're gonna be wearing all day long, most likely. So let's move on. This is still gonna be hats, but these are bucket hats and you've seen these if you've watched my channel. But here's an example. I knit this bucket hat. This is the Marled Summer Bucket Hat by Pam Sapienza. However, I adjusted it and used it in Tarja. These are literally the last of my scraps. They don't even make that much sense, the colors together, but I purposely wanted to see different colors throughout. So I made sure the purple and gray was here as well as represented here. And so that there was different colors around and it's not just completely crazy random, <laughs> but it is still pretty random, but I love that. So Intarja is a great way. This is my first ever Intarja project. 
This is helical knitting, more scraps. So scraps from really the same color family about, my grays and blues and green, where I use the helix knitting method. I use a tutorial from Bear, Very Pink Knits to create this all over one stripe, small striped hat. Then we have this crazy scrappy hat. This is my favorite, honestly. This, I magic knotted all of these ends together. I just did one or two rounds of every color. I changed color in different places. You can use this method in sweaters as well to make a completely color and fun sweater. Um, but I think this is beautiful. I think it's so fun that it's beautiful. <laughs> so those are some examples of hats that I've made and I think would be great scrappy projects for anyone. So I literally used 100% of my scraps in these hats. Same thing here. I literally used up 100% of my acrylic yarns in these hats. And that was just because I wanted to decrease my stash. I wanted to get away from using acrylic and man-made fibers. And I did that by making all of these hats that are gonna go to, go to use eventually, whether they be knits, whether it be donations or gifts. So another idea I literally just came up with right now is using it in blankets. I'm trying to get this blanket. This is um, a blanket I made that is, I'm not gonna show you all of it because it's stuck over there. Um, but this is the Tunisian holiday sampler blanket from Tony Lipsy of TL Yarn Crafts. You can use all kinds of different colors in blankets. You can even make crochet granny square blankets. You can make the Northeasterly that has a bunch of different colors. You can make, um, a lot of people make temperature blankets. You can make a temperature blanket with scraps or you can just find a temperature blanket pattern and make whatever colors you want in there. You can make a crochet granny square blanket. I like, I made a hexagon blanket for my dad for Christmas last year with, again, a ton of my yarn scraps. So blankets are a great idea. Here's going back to a hat for a minute. This is a crochet hat that I made, and these weren't scraps per se. I had all this yarn in my stash, but you could certainly use, make flower granny squares or any kind of crochet square that you want using scraps. This used a minimal amount of yarn. You can do the same thing with blankets and pillowcases. So I had a, this is a pillowcase that I made. Um, it's got my cat's hair all over it, but the back I ran out of yarn. So I just used two different colors, blue stripes that I had for the back of it. This is another, then we can go into shawls. We've got shawls. This is a Stephen West shawl. This is my shawlography mystery knit along from last year. So again, this wasn't scraps for me, but you could certainly use scraps for it. He's got tons of shawl patterns. That'll be beautiful with scraps. I know Jody Brown of the Grocery Girls made her Sweet Shop shawl specifically for scraps. There is the Rainbow Wings shawl by Knitting Expat Designs that I think would be perfect for scraps. There's an Op Art shawl, which I was really close to making earlier this year by Sanja Bargielowski. And it's only two colors in the photos, but I was thinking about using my scraps to make every stripe different or several stripes different. There's the happiness cowl, which is a brioche cowl. You can learn brioche and use all the colors you want. There's the free the minis wrap, which was intentionally made by Amy Meeks to use all your minis up. There are a lot of patterns out there that are made for advents, so you could find those as well. You could also knit socks. I've never knit socks before, but there's the weekend shorty socks, which incorporates a lot of different colors. You can just make a basic pair of socks, but just like with your sweaters, Knit in some stripes. The Rain or Shine Socks is a new pattern from Stephen West that uses slip stitches that I think you could really use a lot of colors in. So there's so many examples. And finally, for some home decor projects. This is a coaster. This is the Boho Frills Coaster, I think, by For the Frills. And again, this wasn't scraps for me, but I just used up all the rest of the cotton that yarn that I had to make as many coasters as I could. I also made these if you just have minimal yarn. These are used for face scrubbies to take my makeup off, to apply toner. I have a bunch of these, I love them. You can find all different patterns online. Here's a hair accessory, a scrunchie. I've made scrunchies like this size. You can knit scrunchies, you can crochet scrunchies. This was velvet yarn that I had from a hat that someone requested that I just wanted to use up, so I used this. Um, you could use almost any fiber for a scrunchie. This is a pattern from Knit Collage again. It is a technically a bracelet. It's basically just an I-cord. I used right, leftover t-shirt yarn, but you can use any yarn you want to make a bracelet. 
Um, you can make this into a keychain if you wanted it shorter. There's all kinds of things you can do with an I cord. So there's tons of ideas for scraps. Furthermore, you can make dishcloths. You can make washcloths. There is the grandma dishcloth pattern. It looks like it uses color changing yarn, but you could just magic knot your ends together and use a bunch of scraps. I think that'd be perfect. There's the color block hand towels from Pearl Soho that uses two colors. There's the colorful half and half washcloths, which I think is really beautiful. It's similar to their half and half wrap that's all the rage, you know? Um, but these washcloths are just a miniature version of that, and I think they're beautiful. And they incorporate so many different colors, but why not have a pop of color in your bathroom, right? Um, you could also do bags like there's the my uh, mosaic bucket bag by rebecca langford i think using a color changing yarn or scraps for that bag would be really beautiful i could go on and on one final idea if you have those little bits of scraps that are just absolutely no use for you instead of throwing them away you can collect them i know several yarn companies we had one here in the u.s that was um, Echo View Fiber Mill, but they have since closed, so I'd have to do some more research on US-based companies that accept yarn scraps, but Hedgehog Fibers, you can mail them in Ireland, and based on the weight that you send, will give you a percentage discount to their store and spin those scraps into their yarn. So there's a lot of different options as well if you just don't want to use it. I donated a bunch of yarn to my local library. That's another idea. If you're just trying to get rid of yarn, um, you can donate it to a thrift store. I actually made an entire Ravelry bundle in my group on Ravelry called EB Knits by Emily. You can take a look. Scrappy slash mini skein project ideas, I named it. There's three pages that I'll keep adding to of all the patterns I talked about today, plus a ton more that I didn't get to. <laughs> but I think there's so many fantastic ideas out there. But I know as me and as I, I as a knitter, especially as a beginner knitter, was like, I don't know what to do with my scraps. I felt so hindered. I felt like... I had to stay in the box, but you really don't. It's all about embracing your creativity. And if you're not comfortable designing your own pieces yet, use some of these patterns. There's tons of examples. Also check Ravelry's project pages for patterns you love because more than likely pe people have adapted that pattern to use scraps or to use stripes or to use a multitude of colors in different ways. I love reading pattern projects, pattern pages and um, the project pages and their notes and what other people have done. I think that's a great way to get more ideas, to get inspiration and bounce ideas around, like mix and match. Use some people's ideas, use others, combine them, or just don't, just learn from that. Maybe this is a project you don't wanna make by using them, by looking at those um, project pages on Ravelry. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some inspiration on projects to make with your leftover scraps or your mini skeins that you have or just those half skeins you have laying around that you don't know what to do with. Um, I hope this gave you some ideas. I know it's inspired me to knit a lot more with my scraps. I'm on a mission this year to decrease my yarn stash. I'm getting there. <laughs> If you want to see where I'm at with that and where I'm started, actually, you can take a look at my yarn stash analysis. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. It really helps me to continue creating content for this channel and helps this channel grow. I appreciate every single one of you. I'd love to hear what you've made with your scrappy projects. Maybe it's advents, maybe it's mini skeins, maybe it's literal just pieces of scraps. There's all kinds of things because yarn will be used. We all love yarn. I want to try new yarns and I hope you do as well. Thank you again so much for being here. Have a fantastic day and happy making, my friends.